The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Good morning, everyone. Welcome in, one and all. Wednesday, July 24. Thanks for being a part of the show today. Coming up, 715. Bobby Smith is going to be on. Uh, she is Director of Development for Catholic Charities, and she's going to be talking about the 100th Anniversary Gala that's coming up uh, for Catholic Charities. Coming up at 745 today, Deacon Eric Pugh is going to be on, a deacon of the Diocese here of Des Moines. He's going to be talking about St. Lawrence today, the St. Lawrence Gathering. So we'll have uh, uh, Deacon Eric Pugh coming up. Love that guy. At uh, 745 today. All right, Deacon Tony, let's offer our day to our Lord with our morning offering. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus and the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deacon Mark now with your news. Getting right down to business this morning, John. Well, we just got to make sure we keep this moving. We got two interviews. <laughs> just as we do every day. That's right. Almost every day. News this morning brought to you by Skeffington's Formal Wear. Learn more at skeffingtons.com. Iowa's law banning most abortions after six weeks will go into effect next Monday following the denial of Planned Parenthood's request for a Supreme Court rehearing. The legislation known as the Heartbeat Law will become state law at 8 a.m. on July 29th, with exceptions for cases of rape, incest, or to save the life of the mother. Initially passed in 2023, the law has faced legal challenges but will now be enforced in Iowa. President Biden says he will address the nation tonight from the Oval Office. He made the announcement in a post on X, and this will be the first on-camera appearance since he dropped out of the 2024 presidential race on Sunday. Earlier this week, Biden told his campaign workers dropping out was the right thing to do. The speech will take place at 7 p.m. Central Time. And the Winter Games are returning to Salt Lake City in 2034. The International Olympic Committee made the announcement this morning. Utah Governor Spencer Cox and Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall have been in Paris meeting with committee members to bring the Games back to the city that hosted them in 2002. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now for a scoreboard update, which I know includes an uh, exciting report on uh, Dallin Catholic's uh, baseball uh, state game yesterday. In sports on your Wednesday morning, last night, the Class 4A state baseball tournament held in Cedar Rapids and a game you heard on most of these Iowa Catholic Radio Network stations. It was 7th seeded Dowling Catholic upending number 2 Dallas Center Grimes by the score of 3-1 to one at Veterans Stadium in Cedar Rapids. Dallas Center Grimes closes out their season with a record of 35-4. And, and seven-seeded Dowling will play on Thursday night at 7.30 against the winner of today's game between third-seeded City High of Iowa City and sixth-seeded Waukee. Dowling advances to the semifinals with a record of 24-15. and 15. Yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Tuesday. In the National League against Chicago, the Milwaukee Brewers defeated the Chicago Cubs by the score of 1-0 at Wrigley Field. While in Pittsburgh, the St. Louis Cardinals defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of 2-1. In the American League yesterday in Texas, the Rangers defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of 3-2. And in interleague play in Kansas City, the Arizona Diamondbacks defeated the Kansas City Royals by the score of 6-2. And in Minneapolis, the Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Minnesota Twins by the score of 3-0. Last night, AAA baseball, the Iowa Cubs open up a six-game homestand against the Indianapolis Indians. And in game one, it was Indianapolis defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of 13-6. Today, game two of the series, Indianapolis Indians, the AAA affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates at the Iowa Cubs. First pitch at noon today at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines. And with your Wednesday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark and Brady. It's uh, it's gotten hotter each day of the rag bride race and uh, or bike ride across the state of Iowa. I'll be down in Knoxville today at St. Anthony's Catholic Church, helping serve up some spaghetti down there. Hope uh, any riders that might be tuned in this morning or people in the Knoxville area will come by and say hello. 
What uh, what do the riders have to look forward to in the weather today? Yeah, thanks, Deacon Mark. Good morning, everyone. Weather today is brought to you by the Iowa State Fair. August 8th through the 18th, you can visit our Iowa Catholic Radio booth next to Ann and Bill Riley Stage. For today, looking at mostly sunny skies, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, highs in the mid-80s. Tonight, partly cloudy conditions, 50% chance again of showers and thunderstorms, lows in the mid-60s. And then by your Thursday, mostly sunny skies and highs in the mid 80s currently in des moines 70 degrees ames and marshalltown 65 and fairfield 67 degrees that's your forecast on the iowa catholic radio network back to you john well so many people are still coming off of such a exciting time at the eucharistic congress and uh, there were many 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 people there many talks that were given as you can imagine but there were some highlights and uh, i thought this piece was really good uh, i saw by francesca uh, Polio Fenton, and uh, she put this together yesterday on the 12 really most exciting or uh, uh, powerful quotes from the National Eucharistic Congress. And uh, they're just 12. I mean, h- how many people spoke, how many people talked, how many, uh, you know, things there were that were offerings. The, here's the thing. Unless she went back and sat through all of the breakout session talks, yeah. I think looking over this list, these are from the revival sessions at night. Yeah, so had to I, I know uh, well, I have a, a big pers- names. Yeah. And I have a personal story from uh, Father Mike Schmitz from a, a breakout session that uh, or, or a, a press conference that I sat in with him. And that'll probably make its way to our own social media. But uh, yeah, these are some great quotes, John. What stands yeah. out to you? Well, I mean, we'll just kind of go down the list on a few of these. I thought thought, well, I'm not going to be able to get to all 12. And then I started reading them. I was like, well, I think I have to. So number one, Father Mike Schmitz, he comes uh, uh, comes with uh, this quote that he said at the Congress. Knowledge can make one great, but only love can make you a saint. I thought I re- that's really good. I read that and I thought exactly, uh, thought back to our conversation yesterday where we talked about, you know, faith is not simply about knowledge. Yeah. Our relationship with Jesus is not simply about knowledge. And uh, yeah, I, this... Uh, I would love to say in the midst of all of this, I sat through, uh, I heard Father Mike Schmidt speak at the uh, revival, but um, among the many quotes he said, uh, the, I don't remember hearing this one specifically, but uh, I'm sure he did because it oh, I saw like it something. online too. Um, yeah. They, they kind of, uh, you know, where they cut it, you know, sort of thing. And, yeah, or and a little reel or yeah, video. And I thought it was really good, right? Knowledge can make one great, but only love can make you a saint. So you think of all the saints in our history, you know, only just a few were really kind of, uh, you know, uh, I guess you would say uh, really, really um, uh, uh, intelligent in the sense of like philosophy or theology. And then you had uh, some that were, you know, pretty smart, were able to get by. You had many that were just not kind of learned, learned at all. Uh, many that, that were not taught, many that didn't go to school, um, but yet they became great saints. And you think, well, well how is that? Uh, it's love. And even for the most intelligent that we had, it wasn't their intelligence that got them there. It was love. And that is what, you know, St. Therese of Lisieux and many of the great saints teach us that it is only love that can make us saints. Nothing else. Number two, your Christianity is not for you, Bishop Robert Barron says. Christianity is not a self-help program, something designed just to make us feel better about ourselves. Your Christianity is for the world. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thought there that and, one and that one meditation. i do remember very distinctly yeah. hearing it's not for us right i mean we can kind of cling to it and think okay it's just my bubble this is just me it's just to make me a saint make me holy that's it right no it's not it's for the world this is what the disciples did this is what jesus commands us to do to go out and go out of ourselves jonathan rumi was there he said quote the eucharist for me is healing the eucharist for me is peace the eucharist for me is my grounding The Eucharist for me is his heart within me, he says. Uh, Sister Miriam James said that uh, the Lord is not overwhelmed by you. He loves you and he sees you and he's not deterred by anything. Good reminder for us there. Mother Adela Galindo said, we need a new Pentecost. We need to be filled with boldness. We need to be filled with intrepidity. We need to be filled with love. We need Oh, excuse me, with generosity to be able to sacrifice everything for the sake of the kingdom. Mother Olga of the Sacred Heart in her keynote said, we have him and nobody can take him away from us. And the crowd roared. I like that. That's good. (laughs) I remember that. Sister Bethany Madonna 
said the love of God has been poured into our hearts, and it's the kindness of God that leads us to life-giving repentance. John, that her, she was the first speaker on uh, on Thursday night, the, the or the Wednesday night revival session. She was the first speaker, and um, I almost feel bad because it might have been one of the best talks of the entire conference. Why do you feel bad? Because it it was at the beginning, and by the end, you know, it, it was it, it almost an I don't want to say an afterthought. I don't remember, as but much. well, it. it but I think it, it it set the stage for the entire for the entire conference, um, and, and every talk I think after hers just kept building and building and building to the, mm. the crescendo of the, uh, the the final evening. But um, that's one if if folks that that is one to go back and certainly listen to is she gave a, a credible testimony, Sister Bethany Madonna. Yeah, uh, on a, uh, a, a she was in a um, they were serving a recovery house for women, and the story she told about about a woman who. Uh, Went into a Eucharistic adoration angry and, and um, over a period of time thought she should quit going. Uh, and, and then ultimately the Lord broke through in, in adoration. And uh, it, it's, it, I can't do it justice. Go, go, uh, you can go and find it online. But yeah, uh, at the Revival Bethany website. Madonna. Uh, Father Mike Schmitz again said that you can never have a revival without repentance. Sister Josephine Garrett heard amazing things about her talk. She's going to be at the Christ Our Life conference. Right. She said, he who made the promise is true, and so we can be people who repent with courage and joy. What a contradiction to be people who say, I'm broken, and I'm sinful, and I'm joyful, and I'm hopeful. What would the world do with a pilgrim people like that? Hmm. What a message there. Monsignor James Shea said, it's time for faithful Catholics to stop trying to live for God. Instead, we should start living from him. Mm. Stop living for God. Start living from God. The body and blood of the Lord is the source of our life, our energy, and our joy. So let's eat and drink here and every day to our heart's content. And then let's rush out into a starving world and tell everybody we meet. Starving people, listen, we found where the food is. That man is going to be a bishop. Yeah, he's awesome. It's not going to be I hope long. not. He is, well. So I, he can stay there. <laughs> want my kids to go there while he's there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, the, the foundation he's he's building there at uh, University of Mary in North Dakota, it, yeah. uh, I think it'll be sustainable. Cardinal Tagle, he was there. He said, uh, those who choose to stay with Jesus will be sent by Jesus. Let us go to proclaim Jesus zealously and joyfully for the life of the world. And Bishop Andrew Cousins, he's kind of the, the one that, you know, this was his baby in a lot of ways. He says, brothers and sisters, we believe that God desires to renew his church and that his, this renewal will happen through you. And that in renewing his church, he will renew the world. It was the point, right? The point of the whole Congress was revival, renewal, and, and, and not for the world, for us to go then into the world out to the world. And I love that, that line from Monsignor Shea, not living for God any longer, but living from God. So all of my actions, all my thoughts, all my deeds, all of it is done from the living God. It's, it's his power. It's his grace that is alive within each and every one of us. And we go to the font of grace, which is the Holy Eucharist. We stay at that font of grace and it is he who then revives us to be able to go out into the world. We're tired. We're lonely. The world can beat us up. Life can beat us up. But uh, we have the answer, friends. And the answer is always Jesus. We look to him, uh, and he's not far from us. You look to him right within our hearts and ask him, Lord, change us. Lord, make me great. Lord, make us saints. That's the prayer today. All right. Coming up when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking to the Director of Development for Catholic Charities about the 100th anniversary gala. Uh, Just around the corner, Bobby Smith is going to be on the show. So we'll have her on when we come back. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Gold Dome Buildings. Gold Dome is locally owned and operated, serving Des Moines and surrounding areas since 1992. Builders of garages, farm buildings, customized backyard sheds, and playhouses. GoldDomeIowa.com. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah and strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsara.org, join S-E-R-R-A dot org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Steve Havman, CEO of St. Vincent de Paul here, and what an incredible 100 years it's been, as we are now serving over 33,000 of your neighbors with food, clothes, workforce training, and reentry services. That's so many people, Dad. Does that include kids, too? Yes, Zoe, that includes kids, too. Please donate to our thrift stores and pantries. Donate, volunteer, shop. St. Vincent de Paul. Learn more at svdpdsm.org. Thank you, Society of St. Vincent de Paul, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear, in business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. I'm Father Thomas Loya, and this week on Light of the East on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. We are not PC, politically correct, here at Light of the East Radio. We are BC, Byzantine Catholic, and hopefully biblically correct. But there are some questions posed by RCs, Roman Catholics, that are not very PC to pose to a BC. Is this making sense? Light of the East, Sunday mornings at 1030 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. John Linetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. Appreciate you being a part of it today. All right. So much going on in the church this summer. And, you know, normally a lot of times summer is not kind of the time for all this stuff to happen. You know, I, I've been on the this show for many years, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's... Uh, it's interesting to see what this Congress, one Congress, can do in the nation and, and how much buzz it can get and how many people are just on fire for it. So there's no one um, no one waiting around or, or, or on vacation this July when it comes to uh, the Eucharist and the revival in our faith. It's it's awesome to see. No, no time to rest. Speaking of no resting, she doesn't rest. Director of Development for uh, Catholic Charities, Bobby Smith, is back on the show. Hi, Bobby. Oh, good morning, good John. Good to have you, as always. All right, we got a lot to talk about. You guys are always so busy, and uh, we love uh, partnering with the Catholic Charities and the work you guys do to get the voice and the word and the works out. Uh, well, let's start first and foremost with the big celebration, right? we got the 100th anniversary. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for the partnership. We yeah. always uh, love being here. We love partnering with Iowa Catholic Radio. Um, and yes, we're celebrating our hundredth year this year. So it is, it's a big deal. Um, it's just, it's so incredible to help the people of the diocese of Des Moines. Um, and we've been at it for a hundred years. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, as the Bishop would say, it's, it's not a calendar accident, uh, that we've been, uh, at this work, um, for a hundred years. And mm. so it's just, it's incredible. So in September, we're going to have this big gala event at the World Food Prize, and we're going to have 250 of our closest friends and family, uh, in the room to celebrate, and uh, there are sponsorship opportunities available. So we, uh, if your business or, or your family or um, your church organization is interested in sponsoring, uh, I encourage you to reach out to me and uh, have a conversation about that. So um, we would love to promote you on social media or, um, you know, at the event as a sponsor and, and get you to be one of those 250 people in the room to help us celebrate. And, it, uh, and yeah. If you were to sum it all up, maybe a sentence or two, what, what do we really celebrate with Catholic charities? Oh my gosh, the impact that we have, uh, on the people in need. So, yeah. you know, we, we do the, the work that Christ calls us to do. Um, we are the hands and feet of Christ and, uh, it's just, it's incredible the impact that we have serving 35,000 people in need within the diocese. Uh, we do so with five vital programs and it's just, it's really incredible, uh, the impact that we have. Uh, five vital, I think, I don't know all five of these. Oh, you, do you have them yeah, in front of you? Absolutely. I don't want to put you on the spot. All right. You know them. You know yeah, them. You're absolutely. a pro. Yeah. What are they? So we have a counseling program. Okay. Um, we also have refugee services. So um, this next 
um, upcoming year, we will set, resettle um, probably 400 to 450 refugees. How does that work when you yeah. say resettle? So they come here um, and, and they've escaped all around the world. Uh, to come here. How do they get to Iowa? Yeah, so they have um, a close tie to um, the Iowa area. So a friend, a close friend or family within uh, central Iowa. And so we work with the U.S. State Department um, and the uh, USCCB, so um, the Catholic bishops, um, to resettle those uh, refugees who are escaping war or persecution. And um, we help them start their new lives here in Iowa. So um, it's, it's not illegal immigrants. It's, mm-hmm. it's uh, refugees um, that we're helping to start their, um, their new lives here in Iowa. So really proud of that program That's and awesome. what they do. Yeah. And you said how many will you resettle or, or help to find a place to live? Yeah, between 400 and 450 a lot this, of people next year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Excited about that. Is that, program. is that every year that number kind of saying the it grows same? every year? I was going to yeah. say it's kind yeah, of, it does. Wow. Yeah. Excited. Okay. So you got refugee services, counseling services. Yes, yes. And then we have our domestic violence and sexual assault program that's based over in council bluffs. Um, I just visited that program yesterday. I'm so excited about the growth in that program. They also uh, work with uh, human trafficking victims as well. So um, just a really critical program over there. They is that a nine home? Counties. It's a sh- there is a shelter okay. um, in that in that program as well. So um, they're at capacity at the moment. So yeah, um, yeah they they go out and um, they serve people um, in those nine counties. Um, so you know they're on the on the road and they also have a, a hotline. So twenty four hour hotline for those mm. people in in need. So will they go when you say they're on the road? Will they go actually pick people up? Yes. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Twenty four hours. Talk about a mission. I know. Woo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, incredible. This is work Catholic do. Charities doing this. Absolutely. Wow. Yes, yes. I did not know that. Hands I'm learning so much here. All right. Yes, so we got yes. counseling, refugee services, domestic violence services that you are helping. I mean, really, lots of services for yes, them. Yes. Yeah. And then and then we have our food pantry. Okay. Um, yep. So um, serving upwards of 600 people every day at our daily window, and then we have our monthly food program as well. That's um, powered really with the Food Bank of Iowa and DMARC um, helps us uh, on the monthly side there. Okay. Um, is that here in Des Moines? The it is, okay. yes. Yep, oh. over on Heppel Avenue. Yeah. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, our emergency family shelter. It's a family shelter. It's got uh, 10 family rooms uh, really powered um, to keep the family unit together. So there's lots of, of shelters here in Des Moines that serve you know either men or women, uh, but ours is a uh, family shelter, so really uh, geared toward the family. Which is really in, uh, interesting, as you said before, because it's there's not a lot like it out there. Right. Right. Yeah. Very unique. So uh, yeah. having that. All right. Here are the five kind of pillars, counseling, refugee services, domestic violence, food pantry and emergency um, family shelters that you have here, which is awesome. So that's what we're celebrating when it comes to a hundredth anniversary, yes. uh, Gail, the, the great work you do. The counseling services, I think, might be uh, something that a lot of people may not know really what they they have at their disposal or can have. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, really, we are looking to expand our counseling program. So um, looking to hire um, additional counselors. Nice. Um, we expanded into the um, the school system a few years ago. So um, yeah, it's a it, we operate on a fee a sliding fee scale. So um, those who you know may not have insurance or mm-hmm. are unable to pay, um, we work with them. Uh, to, to make sure that those services are available. So Good. Okay. Back to the 100th anniversary date. Yes. Yeah, September 5th. September 5th. Yep. And uh, it's going to be down, you said, where, at the food prize. the World prize. Food Prize. Yeah. yeah the food Prize. And uh, how do people sign up for this if they want to support? And where does the money go? Yes. Yeah. So um, it supports our operations. Yes. So absolutely. That was so a all slam of those, dunk. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> those five programs we just highlighted yep. for you. So yep. so September 5th, where do they go? Yes. Um, so you can visit our website. Um, so CatholicCharitiesDM.org um, is our website. So uh, check it out. And um, again, I can be the contact person there. So Bobby Smith, uh, B Smith at CatholicCharitiesDM.org uh, is how you can reach me. And you guys just got a $60,000 grant. Iowa West Foundation. That's yes, awesome. Yeah, yeah, supports our our uh, domestic violence and sexual assault program. Very over there cool. I mean, you, you got businesses supporting as well. This isn't just kind of people in the pews. You got businesses and and foundations and and nonprofit or people rallying around you guys, cheering for you guys, partnering with you guys. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Partnerships is the key. It's yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Okay. We yeah. also have 
of all these services we were talking about, you are also kind of on the front lines for disaster relief that people may not know Thank about. Thank you, John. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that. I um, certainly want to uh, make sure that everyone knows about our disaster relief assistance. So um, this is a tremendous partnership, again, with Catholic Charities USA. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, the, the five programs we just talked about, we operate very lean um, uh, in our organization. So we only have about 65 staff um, mm-hmm. across all five of those operations. So while we would love to be on the front lines, you know, helping to haul out those tree branches and, and reshingle roofs and, and um, you know, passing out water bottles. We just don't have the the staff, uh, the manpower to be able to do that. But what we can do is provide some financial assistance. So we um, applied for some grants through Catholic Charities USA, and we're successful in, in obtaining those grants. Um, and we're able to then disseminate those funds to those in need. So specifically, the two storms uh, that were tornadic within our diocese here recently. So April 26th, um, the tornadoes that hit Pleasant Hill and Minden. Mm-hmm. And then uh, May 21st, um, um, everyone remembers the massive tornado that hit Greenfield. Um, if anyone in our diocese um, does not have to be Catholic, anyone in our diocese was impacted by those um, storms, they can go on to our website, catholiccharitiesdm.org slash disaster hyphen relief. Mm. And there's a simple application form. It's just um, literally, it takes maybe five, maybe 10 minutes to complete. Um, write a couple sentences about how you were impacted um, you know, who was who was in your household, what's your address, things like that. Um, and you can qualify for some financial assistance from us. This is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, we have um, $50,000 to disseminate. We have about half of that left. So there's still funding available. Um, you know, Catholic Charities is here to help all those in need, the poor, the vulnerable. A lot of times you you think um, about, you know, the homeless, those who are food insecure, but um, vulnerability does not just, you know, fall within those limits. Sure. Um, so it's it's anyone. Um, and so that can help with, you know, those insurance deductibles that can help with, you know, the the, the food in the freezer that you had to throw away um, because you're, you lost power. So um, anyone in the diocese um, can apply for those. Yeah. Those funds. And I, I'm on the site right now. Pretty easy, straightforward. So oh, if you uh, need some help and, and, you know, anything and you guys will be able to sift through and help, you know, if they need help or if they don't, or if they can't afford it, or they can't. But uh, I would assume most people filling this out will need a little help. And so if you do need yeah. a little help, that's OK. There's nothing to be shameful about. We've all needed help in our time. Go to Catholic Charities DM dot org slash Daster dash relief. Yes, yes. And um, the diocese also um, did a second collection. Um, So those parishioners in our diocese who may have contributed to that second collection, um, those funds are sort of kept in a separate um, pot. But anyone who submits that application to Catholic Charities, uh, we I work in close collaboration with um, Laura Holmes at the diocese. Nice. She's, her office is right next door to mine. So um, anyone who submits our application, um, I'm going to also share her na- those names with Laura, and um, they could also be um, eligible to receive some diocesan funding as and, well. And last but not least, there's an event coming up benefiting refugee services we want to talk about quick. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we have another Centennial Trivia event coming up um, on Saturday, October 19th. It's at 5 o'clock. It's at the Pastoral Center downtown. Um, anyone who's been to one of our Centennial Trivia Nights um, can tell you it's a, just a boatload of fun. Um, we, wow. you know, play music, we have good food, yeah. um, and then, you know, bring a, bring a team or just register yourself individually and we'll hook you up with the team that night. But um, lots, of, lots of fun trivia and it'll benefit our Refugee Services program. Um, so we'll have uh, lots of fun that night. I am so bad at trivia. Oh, it does not matter. Uh, we help you I out along so the bad. way. And I mean, so I'm fun. embarrassing. <laughs> I, I, I am, I don't, no one should ever want me on their team. If there's a Catholic question, I can get that right once in a while. Oh, but we, we sprinkle those in too. <laughs> I'm so embarrassing when it comes to Twitter. It, it, th- things like I know, but then like you guys ask the question, trivia, and I just blank. I can't do it. So <laughs> anyway, so much on the docket for Catholic Charities. They, they are just always moving. You can't hold them back, folks. They're always moving 100 miles an hour and they got... A lot of different services, a lot of events, and a lot of ways to be able to support and get support if you need it. Go to catholiccharitiesdm.org, correct? Yes. Thank you so much. Bobby John. Joe Smith, you rock. Oh, thanks so You're much. You're very good on air. You know that? You've got a good voice. you got a good presence, all that. Oh. You need a job? 
Uh, no. no, I'm happy okay. with the one All right, we're not taking her away, I guess. <laughs> Catholic Charities should be happy to have Bobby Joe Smith. God bless you, Bobby. Thanks, John. All right, coming up right after this, we are going to be talking in the second half hour uh, to the very own Deacon Eric Pugh. He's going to be on to talk about a St. Lawrence gathering that we have coming up. But right now, let's go to today's gospel and reflection. The Lord be with you. A reading Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. The parable of the sower and the seed reminds us of just how generous, just how liberal God is in scattering the seed. He knows that some of the soil in our hearts is rocky, is thorny, even is hard like the path. And yet he continues to pour out his grace. He continues to pour out his grace so that we might soften our hearts in response to so generous a gift. And of course, on the fertile soil, God does not just produce some fruit, but a hundred, sixty, thirty-fold. We can never outdo God's generosity, God's creativity, God's abundance. He will bring to fruition what he sows. For us as well, it's also a good reminder that we are called to sow the seed of the word as well. And we are not to judge whether the person in front of us is rocky, thorny soil, the path, hardened heart, or even if they're fertile soil. The temptation can be to only sow where we think it's fertile. But that is not what God does. He is always sowing his seed, always sowing the seed in hopes that it will gain a good response. We can do the same as sowers of the seed of God's word. May God bless you and let us continue praying for each other. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, this is Father Chris Alar at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Thank you for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming is provided by construction professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at goldenrulephc.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. Come celebrate your Catholic faith where lives are changed. World-class speakers. Adoration. Inspirational music. Holy Mass. Reconciliation. And so much more. A weekend of faith sharing, faith building, and praise. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. September 28th and 29th at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Details and ticket info at ChristOurLifeIowa.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for joining us, friends. John Lindetti here in the Catholic Morning Show. We got a St. Lawrence gatherings. Attention, hear ye, hear ye. All those that may be thinking about the diaconate. What are you laughing at over there? 
Hear ye, hear ye. Yeah, I like All that. those out there considering, hear ye, hear ye. maybe considering their call to the permanent diaconate. Yeah. Come join the St. Lawrence that, gathering. We're surrounded by deacons in They're here. everywhere. Yeah. Deacon More Mark. deacons than lady up deacon in this place. Tony. We got Deacon Eric in the other room. We got Deacon Brady. <laughs> oh, not yet. Sorry. No. Okay. Okay. All he's, right. He's still discerning his call. Yeah, we'll get him there. No, I got him for the priesthood. He doesn't know that yet. He is going to be a late vocation. Father Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, no doubt. Father Deacon Grimm. Tony, let's pray for Father Brady. St. <laughs> <laughs> Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go now to Deacon Mark with your news. Thank you, Deacon John. Ah. News this morning brought to you by Skeffington's Formal Wear. Learn more at skeffingtons.com. Des Moines City leaders are considering changing an ordinance that may impact backyard flocks due to noise complaints. The city council is discussing limiting the number of chickens and roosters a homeowner can have. The Des Moines councilwoman says the change is necessary as residents are disturbed by the noise. Citizens can share their opinions on the proposed ordinance at a council meeting on August 5th at Des Moines City Hall. Does that can impact you, John, and your, your, your backyard flock? Do you have any? Yeah. How many well, do we're you not, have? We're not in the city. Oh, we're, okay. we're out in unincorporated Polk County. We have uh, currently, we're I think, around 40 chickens. I can't believe you can actually have chickens in the city. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Have you, have you not been over by um, uh, Smoky Row? In, in, uh, no. Just I off of MLK? No. Yeah. No, there's, there's in fact, there's frequently chickens roaming around the neighborhood over there. Really? I don't know where the... F- like stray chickens? Yeah, like they've, they've flown the coop, as so they say. So you could just, like, grab one and have eggs? If you can catch it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Rocky Balboa proved that that's not an easy that's task. That's not easy. Okay. And if, All right. if you can catch a chicken, then you're I'm a, learning a, lot a champion today. boxer. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Does... <laughs> Dozens of Democrat lawmakers will not be attending Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's address to Congress today. It's a protest against Israel's war in Gaza and the massive number of civilian casualties there. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois said while he will stand by Israel, he will not stand and cheer for Netanyahu. Similar sentiments were shared by other lawmakers. Some said they simply can't make it because of scheduling conflicts. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, the only Palestinian member of Congress, called Netanyahu a war criminal. In the fittest cities in the U.S., John, this might might, uh, surprise you, but Arlington, Virginia and Washington, D.C. That's according to a, a ranking by the American College of Sports Medicine and the Anthem Foundation. Seattle, San Francisco and Madison, Wisconsin follow just behind. The index ranks the 100th. 100 largest cities in the country using 33 indicators at the bottom of the list, Memphis, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and Oklahoma City. Port St. Lucie. I've been there. I've spoken there. How in the world is that? Is there the, a bunch of un, unfit people there? I don't remember that. Maybe they were spiritually unhealthy yeah. and uh, you're going, you went down to uh, try, try to resurrect them. They got pretty specific I, on the unhealthy places, well, didn't they? Well, in uh, Oklahoma City, <laughs> take that, Bo Bonner. Uh-oh, Bo. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's go to Mark Amadeo for now. Look at sports. In sports on your Wednesday morning, last night, the Class 4A state baseball tournament held in Cedar Rapids and a game you heard on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. It was seventh-seeded Dowling Catholic upending number two Dallas Center Grimes by the score of 3-1 to one at Veterans Stadium in Cedar Rapids. Dallas Center Grimes closes out their season with a record of 35-4. And and seven-seeded Dowling will play on Thursday night at 7.30 against the winner of today's game between third-seeded City High of Iowa City and sixth-seeded Waukee. Dowling advances to the semifinals with a record of 24-15. and Yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard... All the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Tuesday. In the National League in Chicago, the Milwaukee Brewers defeated the Chicago Cubs by the score of 1 to nothing at Wrigley Field. While in Pittsburgh, the St. Louis Cardinals defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of 2 to 1. In the American League yesterday in Texas, the Rangers defeated the Chicago White Sox by the score of 3 to 2. And in interleague play in Kansas City, the Arizona Diamondbacks defeated the Kansas City Royals by the score of 6 to 2. And in Minneapolis, the Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Minnesota Twins by the score of 3 to nothing. Last night, Triple-A baseball, the Iowa Cubs open up a six-game homestand against the Indianapolis Indians. 
And in game one, it was Indianapolis defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of 13 to 6. Today, game two of the series, Indianapolis Indians, the AAA affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates at the Iowa Cubs. First pitch at noon today at Principal Park in downtown Des Moines. And with your Wednesday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And let's go now to Brady for a look at uh, weather forecast. <laughs> I thought today. you were going to say Deacon again. No, no, Father. Oh, Father. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> okay, that might take more discernment. Yeah. 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 Uh, weather today is brought to you by the Iowa State Fair. That is August 8th through the 18th. Visit us at the Iowa Catholic Radio booth next to the Ann and Bill Riley stage. That is August 8th through the 18th. For today, mostly sunny skies, a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, highs in the mid-80s. For tonight, partly cloudy conditions, 50% chance once again of showers and thunderstorms, and lows in the mid-60s. And then on Thursday, mostly sunny skies, highs in the mid-80s once again. Currently in Des Moines, 70 degrees, Ames and Marshalltown, 67, Fairfield, 68 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, John. All right. We're going to give away a set or a pair, excuse me, uh, a pair. A set would be three, right? Yes. Uh, A pair of tickets to the Christ Our Life conference that's going to be taking place. And uh, this is the last weekend of September. And I, I, for one, am very excited about this. I don't know about you. So, uh, Deacon. Me personally? Yeah, you're supposed to I say am yes. jacked up. Thank you. I thank mean, you. coming off the uh, National Eucharistic Congress, I, I was thinking about uh, this conference yeah. uh, that came to mind several times throughout the weekend because I was thinking how blessed we are. And I met a, a couple from uh, Minnesota who have come down every year for the Christ Our Life Conference. And uh, when they saw my badge and where I was from, they're like, we come to, we come to your conference, uh, you know, every, every time you have it. And so this is an event that many people look forward to. If you've never been, um, I think the, uh, I think maybe that's the call out we put. If you have never been to the Christ Our Life conference, we want to, we want to hear from you. And uh, we're going to give away that pair of tickets uh, to you. John, I'll tell you. Oh, when, you have and, to. You, you are eligible only if you've never been. And we're going to do honor system. I mean, oh. if you, maybe if you've been before. Uh, so this is a special. These are call different out. rules here. Well, I like I wanna, this. I like. I want a special call out to somebody who's yeah. never been. All right. And we're gonna we're gonna trust the people. You, be honest. You here. text I love Jesus to five one five two two three eleven fifty if you have never been to the Christ Our Life conference. All right. Uh, you are eligible right now for two free tickets. You've never been. All right. We're yeah. on our system here. You text the words, I love Jesus, into 515-223-1150. And, and, and here's you, the deal. First one. I want to see the first one. Do you got the text thing? Up? Oh, I'll, I'll pull it we'll up do in just a, a second. Yeah. It takes, sometimes it takes a second. Then you get a slew of million of them that come in. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, well, and here's the thing. When you come to pick up the... Uh, uh, when we... He, when you come to pick up the tickets, Father Brady will, he can read souls. Yeah. And, and so when you pick up the tickets, if, you, if you've been there before and you're claiming these as, as someone who's never gone, Father Brady will look, at your, uh, look, look into your soul and, and judge you. James Perkins, you win. Fantastic. He Thank was you. the first one. That we're shut down. That's look at it. that. Just he like says, that. I love James Perkins. He's never been. But honor system. He's never been to the Christ Our Life Conference, and he's going to go for the first time. Courtesy of Iowa Catholic Radio. Wow. Hey, John, I want to give away another pair of tickets today, but it's going to be down in Knoxville. I'm going to be in the giving mood. I Well, because Look at you. They're, I didn't pay for them. Yeah. So uh, uh, they were given to us to give away, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to be at Knoxville today, St. Anthony's Catholic Church, as the uh, it's the overnight stay for tonight for the Rag Bry Riders. They've got a delicious spaghetti dinner that they're going to be serving up there at the parish from 4 to 6 p.m. Mm. The first person that approaches me, and I will be wearing my purple Iowa Catholic Radio Network uh, shirt, along with uh, some volunteers. The Al McGeer family is going to come down and join me at, uh, at St. Anthony's. <laughs> In Knoxville today, the first person who comes up and says, I want to know, who's your favorite member of the Iowa Catholic Radio uh, Morning Show team? Deacon Tony, Father Brady, Deacon John, or Deacon Mark? Uh, ah! that's, uh, come up and tell me who your favorite uh, member of the Catholic Morning Show team is, and I will have two tickets to hand to you at uh, in Knoxville today. First person to do it. Okay. There you go. You got the rules, everyone. Deacon Mark, is uh, he's uh, got a lot of generosity in him this morning. He's given away everything. All right? Next, it's going to be a car. I don't know what else he's got, but we'll see. All right. It it might be a car, but it'll be out of gas and need a new battery. That's true. (laughs) Let's go to our saint of the day. 
This is your Saint of the Day on Iowa Catholic Radio. Today we recognize one of the saints of the Eastern Rites of the Church. The other lung, as St. John Paul II said, from which the church draws breath, St. Charbel Makhlouf today was born in Lebanon in 1828. He worked as a shepherd before answering the call to become first a monk, then a priest at the age of 31. He entered the monastery of Marin and was ordained a priest of the Marianite order. Charbel tried to emulate the founder of his monastery, St. Marin, who spent much of his time as a hermit. For 23 years, Charbel lived a mostly solitary life. He found all the companionship he needed in the Eucharist. Occasionally, his superiors would ask him to travel to nearby villages to administer the sacraments, which was was a journey of great joy for him. In 1898, Charbel suffered a stroke while saying Mass. His health quickly deteriorated, and he passed away on Christmas Eve. His tomb quickly became a site of pilgrimage, and even of miraculous healings, people from around the world still go to St. Charbel's tomb and will receive healings of all kinds. He's known today as the Hermit of Lebanon. There's a beautiful little cave, if you will, like chapel in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. If you ever go to St. Patrick's, it's to the left. So you go straight down, you see the altar, just to the left, go all the way to the back, and you actually can go inside a tiny little cave just for one, and you can pray. It's absolutely beautiful. We ask today St. Charbel Makhlouf to pray for us. Amen. I love going in that little cave. It's awesome. All right, when we come back, we're going to be joined by Deacon Eric Pugh to talk about a big gathering that's taking place, St. Lawrence Gathering, for those prospective deacons when we come back. John Linetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. Friends, don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Encounter Jesus and local Catholics daily. Tune in to Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Parish in West Des Moines, weekday mornings at 1030, or listen anytime with the Iowa Catholic Radio mobile app. At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. Iowa Catholic Radio needs you, whether it's assisting with events, answering the phone, being a parish ambassador, or simply a commitment to pray. Iowa Catholic Radio depends on you to help connect listeners to Christ. Email contact at iowacatholicradio.com to get involved. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Here we go. Let's go to Deacon Eric Pugh right now. He is a deacon of the Diocese of Des Moines. He's right here, ready to go. Good morning. How you doing? Great. All right. The life of a deacon we're talking about today, in addition to uh, the St. Lawrence gathering. So first of all, St. Lawrence, what do we mean when we say there's a gathering coming up for him? We're going to have a a dinner uh, on August 11th Mm -hmm. at 2 p.m. So it'll be in the middle of uh, Sunday afternoon. It's actually the day after St. Lawrence. His feast day. Nice. Uh, But that was just what was available for us. Well, this is at your parish, too. St. John the Apostle in Norwalk. Is that right? Yes. Is this where you guys belong? Right. This is where I'm assigned. When when did you get assigned there? This February, I believe. I didn't know that. Yeah. Because you were at Winterset. Right. How far of a drive is that? Oh, 20 minutes. Oh, that's not bad. No. Okay. So you got a whole new church community. What's right. that like for a deacon? I mean, you're you're planted, right? It's like for me, like I, St. Pius is home. Someone tells me I got to go serve somewhere else. That'd be tough. Yeah, it's 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 only tough for a moment till you is realize it? that they're just the they're the same uh, uh, church as all the rest. They're yeah. all they're all uh, they all have their different charisms and their different uh, personalities, but they're they're still wonderful 
uh, Catholic uh, faithful, and they're wonderful to be around. Yeah. How does that work when it comes to you know a deacon being assigned to a parish? Do you get a say in that, or do you just not, and you just wake up one day and find out I'm moving? How does that work? The bishop decides. Yeah. But there, there's certainly some say in conversation you know, where you're at. Some conversation. Yeah. I would, I would figure that. Um, all right. D, uh, this is for August 11th. This is for people that are thinking about becoming deacons, right? The idea is the call is coming. The bishop is going to put out a call. Uh, we know that it's coming. It seems like some of the, uh, it seems like it's in the past. It's been for, at least for me, like a surprise that, oh, the call is coming and we have so much time to do this. And we really want to change that a little bit so that people have an opportunity to um, think and pray and ask some questions in a, in a very low key way and really kind of discover what the diaconate is so that they can pray and discern about it. What would you say to someone that says, what, what is a deacon? How, how, how does that work? What, what am I signing up for or discerning, if you will? Really, it's, a, it's really a, a, your diacon that is about service, yeah. serving, serving the, the, the people. Ordained to serve, right? Ordained to serve. I mean, this is what, what you guys are. And, and uh, charisms, do you look for different charisms? Oh, this person can speak well, or this person's successful, or this person, how, what, what do you look for in a... No, we're adventure? looking, everyone has gifts. Yeah. And to develop those gifts is important. And that will, that's part of the discernment process, part of the uh, going through the formation and what that looks like. And people are really, they're all over the place mm-hmm. in what they have for charisms. Every Everything from farmers to doctors to laborers to uh, everything is, is in the diaconate. So someone says, I'm terrified of speaking in front of people. You still could be a deacon. You can still be a deacon. Yeah. And, you, and still. you still may be called, right? Right. And this is also about the church calling calling us. Yeah. What the do you church mean? Is, the church is also has to discern and call to make sure that, oh, I got it. that they, have a, they have a process also where they have to determine whether uh, your call is real and the call comes from, you know, come from the bishop. That's well. a great point. And, and I think one that a lot of people don't think about, right? Um, sometimes people think seminaries uh, in general for priesthood are just kind of priest factories, right? Person says, I want to be a priest. They enter the seminary and then four years they ship them out of priests. That's just not the way it works. And, and Deacon Eric is right on with this, especially with all vocations, but most especially when it comes to holy orders, um, the priesthood and the diaconate, that the church is discerning you as well. So in this time of formation, it's not just, oh, I want to do this and it's going to happen. The church, I, I know people where uh, uh, people, um, uh, uh, w- w- superiors have gone up to them and said, you're just not called here, you know, to a, this religious life, this religious order, priesthood in general, the diaconate, you know, this just isn't a call for you. And people maybe even thought, well, yeah, it is. But um, the church discerns, too. That's a really good point. Right. Yeah. One of the things that that uh, has been uh, a little bit driving in this is our diaconate. The average age of our deacons is older. It's almost a retired force. Yeah. That doesn't mean all of them. It just means sure. And that some of that that the the average age is is, is in the the older time frames. Look at Deacon Mark. Lives. He's bringing that down. Deacon Mark is bringing, He's bringing it down. That, are, He's helping the average. Are you fifty, Deacon Mark? I will be later this year. Be fifty wow. years. What are yep. we doing for you? Um, that's a different topic for a different day. I mean, what, what for, for 50 <laughs> years, a young deacon like this? Yeah, that's awesome. Is that, so, is that young? Y- yes, it yeah. is actually. Yeah. There is, uh, an interest in getting people who have, who are younger. I mean, you can be a deacon at, at age 35. So we want to get some more information to people's hands so that they can discern whether or not they can be a, a deacon earlier. There's a lot of effort with that. They, many deacons have kids. Many, many of the people looking into yeah, this have kids. It's issue, difficult. Right? So I think there. I, this is a personal feeling, not a, not anything official. I would like to see some active uh, initiative that the parishes or the dios, you know, the the diocesan um, effort could support rally younger around them. deacons, rally around them in a more uh, active way. Yeah. To help them, uh, they've got kids. There's a lot of effort that goes oh, into yeah. into formation. Yeah. What's the um, what, what's the, the the training like, if you will? So right now, there we have a we have a group going right now. Yeah. A group of aspirants that are uh, aspiring, of course, to mm-hmm. be to be deacons. Five years, four years. It's five years. Five years now. It used five to be years. four. Used to be four. What's four the and fifth half. now? 
they've just gone through a, an audit and uh, nationwide the 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 uh, UCCB has changed and oh, they, they added and they've added some additional uh, effort. Very cool. Okay, so five year process, and uh, is it once a month? Is it twice a month? How's that work now? There's a little bit of both. Um, we're right now we're primarily meeting once a month on a Saturday. Okay, and uh, they they. Uh, we meet at a parish right now. We're meeting in Atlantic, which is great, and, yeah. and uh, it's a kind of a more central place in the diocese. But it's we're not going to Conception anymore, right? The the uh, the formation, the uh, uh, academic piece is being handled by the Josephinium Institute. Really? Yes. Interesting. And that's mostly it's all online. Yeah. And all by uh, Zoom or. Well, or, that's got to make things right. a lot easier for young people. Yes. Yes. Now. It I mean, does. we. They, that from what you were just saying that that's a big that's a big deal right to to get young people into the church which is good there's always you know double edged swords on that too right i mean sacrifice a little bit for that but at the same time want to get some of those younger guys in there that's right that's going to be important some of those young guys like deacon mark over here my goodness uh, how long have you been a deacon mark it'll be 6 years on august 4th seems like longer than that fourth or fifth. how long did you take to discern uh like 30 days Really? Actually, no, I would say I, my formation was, dis, I mean, I, I was discerning throughout. Yeah. And that's, I think, true for everyone. But, uh, yeah, but to people, say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go in, that's a big commitment. It, w- without a doubt. And I would say the hesitation for my wife and I at the time was uh, the age of our kids yeah. and, and our already the our activity level. But, you know, what we prayed about was if this is what God is truly calling us to do, and there's sometimes never absolute certainty, yeah. but there is, uh, you know, you have to abandon yourself to God and say he will provide. And he absolutely did. And, and, and you know, our prayer throughout was, Lord, if this is not what you're calling us to, right. please make it abundantly clear. But every hurdle, every obstacle that was placed before us, the Lord met and uh, with grace and, and opportunity. If you're called, you're called, right? The Holy Spirit's going to find a way. Go ahead. I would say that, too. Every, we had all kinds of concerns come up, and we had bar- we had some serious barriers yeah. going in, and they were wiped away. And, and I, I can't, it miraculously ah. wiped away. That's well, we never cool. had it. We never struggled. I don't think we missed a we we didn't miss a, a, a trip to conception. There nice. was never a, never a time that we couldn't make it. It's pretty awesome. I, I want to give the date again: August eleventh at two p.m. A Saint Lawrence gathering at Saint John the Apostle in Norwalk, Iowa. So this is a gathering for people uh, that maybe just thinking about uh, the the diaconate. You don't have to be committed. You don't have to say I'm doing this for sure. Or I'm not doing it for sure. To go and think, you're going to hear some of the uh, deacons there share their vocation stories as well. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe get a little snack or a little food or something. August Barbe- 11th. Barbecue. Barbecue. Oh, man, I got to show up. I'm all of a sudden discerning this thing now. <laughs> Your barbecue. Uh, August 11th, 2 p.m. is the time. How do people sign up? They need to go to the uh, Di- diocese. They need to go to the I got diocese. it right here. DMDiocese.org is where you can go. And uh, if you just Google St. Lawrence Gathering, uh, Des Moines, it comes right up. So if you just Google St. Lawrence Gathering, Des Moines, and then you can click here. It says register. They make it very easy. You can uh, email as well. So good stuff this morning. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you. You're a good man. And thank you for your uh, your ministry as well. All right. Let's pray, Deacon Tony. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit come down upon all of us. Protect us all from evil and bring us all to his everlasting life. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. I'm John Leonetti. Back on tomorrow. Be confident in Christ's mercy and his love today.